A very warm good evening, good evening to all the dignitaries, globally recognized IEEE representatives, Execom members of various regions and subsections, principals of various colleges, organizing committee of this event, branch counselors and student volunteers. Myself, Dr. Sujata N. Patil, Execom member IEEE Bangalore ITS chapter and HOD of Department of Electrical and Electronics KLE Dr. MSS CET Belgami. Welcome you all to this international webinar on machine learning for wireless communication. Organized by IEEE Information Theory Society Bangalore chapter in association with IEEE Bangalore section and IEEE Mysore subsection. The topic chosen is highly relevant in current scenario. I request all the participants to stay muted for the smooth conduction of the event. So let me start the event by briefing about the IEEE. The Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers is the world's largest technical professional organization dedicated to advancing technology for the benefit of humanity. IEEE and its members inspire a globally global community to innovate for the better tomorrow through highly cited publications, conference technologies, standards, and professional activities. IEEE is a trusted voice for engineering, computing, and technology information around the globe. IEEE Information Theory Society membership enables the individuals to stay current updated within the chosen technology and ensures one in, each, uh, in the touch with the peers. IEEE Information Theory is a leading technical society that focus on the processing of transmission, storage, and the use of information as well as the foundation yes. for the communication process. So with this brief introduction, I request Dr. Inu Ayappan, Chair Elect ITS, Amazon Web Services Bangalore, to introduce our today's speaker, Dr. Dr. Sotirios Gudos, Associate Professor, Department of Physics, Aristotle University of uh, Thessaloniki, Greece. Uh, Dr. Binu, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sushada. Uh, my pleasure to, to welcome uh, Dr. Sotirios uh, K. Gaudos uh, to this uh, uh, to to uh, give his talk to this uh, to this uh, audience. Uh, so uh, to introduce Dr. Uh, Sotirios, Dr. Sotirios received his B.Sc. degree in physics in 1991, M.Sc. Uh, in uh, electronics in 1994, Ph.D. degree in physics in 2001, and diploma in electrical and computer engineering in 2011. All of these from uh, Aristotle University of Thessaloniki. Uh, and in 2005, he also obtained a master's in information. Uh, sir, you are uh, muted. Uh, please unmute yourself. Oh, sorry. I am uh, absolutely uh, sorry. I was uh, talking on mute. Uh, uh, so I'll start again. So it's my it's my pleasure to to uh, to invite uh, uh, to to welcome uh, Professor Sotorios K. Gaudos uh, to address this uh, audience. Uh, so, uh, Doctor, to introduce uh, uh, Professor Gaudos, uh, he uh, he's uh, he received his B.Sc. degree in physics in 1991, M.Sc. postgraduate uh, in electronics in 1994, a Ph.D. degree in physics in 2001. Uh, diploma degree in electrical and computer engineering in 2011. All of these from uh, Aristotle University of uh, Thessaloniki. And in 2005, he obtained master's in information systems from uh, University of Macedonia, Greece. He uh, joined Department of Physics, Aristotle University of uh, Thessaloniki in 2013, where he is currently uh, associate professor. Uh, Doctor uh, is uh, currently, Dr. Gaudos is a director of uh, uh, ELEDIA at Auth Lab, uh, which focuses on industry academia collaboration uh, as part of the university. Uh, his uh, research interests include antenna and microwave uh, structures design, 
evolutionary algorithms, machine learning, wireless communication, and semantic web technologies. He has authored and co-authored uh, co um, multiple papers, more than 200 of them, in peer-reviewed journals, international conferences, and book chapters. Professor Gaudos is a, is a founding ed chief and editor of Telecom Open Access. Uh, uh, and he's currently serving uh, the, as an associate editor of IEEE Access, IEEE Open Journal of Communication Society. He's also a member of the, electric, uh, the editorial board of the International Journal of Antenna and Propagation, the Eurasip Journal of, uh, on Wireless Communication and Networking and International Journal on Advanced uh, advances on intelligence intelligence systems. He's also uh, a member of the topic board of the uh, Electronic Open Access Journal, uh, and and he is currently serving as the the chapter coordinator of IEEE Greece section. Uh, in, uh, lately, in 2000, uh, recently in 2021, he has authored a book with, uh, titled uh, "Emerging Evolutionary Algorithms for Antenna and Wireless Communication." So with that, I'll I'll thank uh, him again for uh, for agreeing to 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 present uh, to this audience. I welcome you again and back to you, Dr. Sujata. Uh, thank you, Dr. Binu. Uh, now, may I request Chair IEEE Bangalore Section ITS Chapter, Dr. Parmesh Jari BD, Professor and Head of Department Telecommunication and Engineering, GSSS Institute of Engineering and Technology for Women, Mysuru, to address about the IEEE Bangalore Section ITS Chapter. Uh, over to you, sir. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, I take this opportunity to welcome all of you for the today's webinar on machine learning is this the 30th uh, 13th webinar of uh, IEEE information theory society bangalore chapter uh, actually this IEEE information society bangalore chapter is a new chapter it was inaugurated on uh, 19 jan 2021 by the uh, dr v liu president of IEEE its information theory society uh, at uh, usa and the uh, we have established around uh, nine student branch chapter uh, since uh, Jan 2021, and currently the the uh, membership due for uh, IEEE Information Theory Society is 0.5 dollar for students and point dollar uh, uh, 6.25 for professional members. Actually, under ITS uh, chapters, uh, we are organizing uh, a webinar series. And we would like to uh, plan to have outreach program for students and faculty members in association with industry and academia. We would like to have the IEEE ITS flagship conference uh, in the coming years. And uh, we would like to set up the ITS innovation form, uh, in innovation form. And actually, the main benefit of this IEEE Information Theory Society, uh, we can assess the digital library with electronic access to IEEE transactions on information theory and IEEE journal on uh, selected areas in information theory and IEEE bits the information theory magazine which is released their first issue let, uh, in the June to, in the 2021 membership year and all the uh, theory IEEE information theory society members will receive the uh, the print version of their uh, membership and a free print copy of the IEEE information theory newsletter will also get and you can also have the network opportunities uh, uh, through our outreach event so for establishing the IEEE Information Theory Society, so we need six active students and uh, your college should have uh, IEEE student branch in your institution. We need six students and one faculty member. So who is also a member of ITS uh, as the student branch advisor. Okay, so, so once again, uh, I welcome all of you for today's webinar. Thank you. Thanks for your patience listening. Uh, thank you, sir. So now. Uh, may I have a privilege for in, uh, of inviting Dr. Uh, Sotirios uh, K. Kudos, Professor, to address the gathering uh, for which all are uh, all of us are eagerly waiting. So over to you, Professor. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to thank you uh, all and uh, Professor Paramesahari for uh, his invitation. It's such an uh, interesting uh, meeting. Uh, I would like to thank also the IEEE Information Society of Bangalore chapter for this uh, uh, event, for the organizing this event. So, the, uh, my talk will be on machine learning for wireless communications. 
Uh, as you said, well, uh, I am associate professor in Aristotle University of Thessaloniki, Greece, in the School of Physics. And uh, I'm also part of the Aladia Research Center. Uh, I will show some. The Aladia Research Center is a global network of uh, research labs directed by Professor Andrea Massa of the University of Trento. And uh, I am the director of the Aladia at the Aristotle University of Thessaloniki, uh, Department of Physics. And this is the some members of uh, the team. So, uh, the outline of my presentation will be first, I will do some introduction to machine learning basics. I'm sorry if you, well, if you find some of this is very uh, trivial, I'm sorry, but I didn't know actually your background, your, the background. Uh, then I will uh, focus on assembly learning methods for machine learning. Uh, after that, I will give some examples of machine learning in uh, wireless communications, some cases in all, uh, modern cases. And then I will try briefly because, as you know, uh, 5G is now on, is, uh, is uh, the focus, uh, has the focus for uh, its technological content. I will try to uh, discuss why is machine learning important for 5G. And finally, I will briefly uh, present some of the most popular uh, software tools for machine learning. So, to start, let's start with the machine learning basics. So, well, in order to understand the machine learning basics, we need first to understand what is data science, because uh, it's, uh, and to uh, understand what is data mining, what is data, uh, and what's the relation with machine learning. So, data science is the study of generaliz uh, generalizable uh, extraction of knowledge from data. So, we, if we have, if we consider this as a circle, that uh, the whole fields of data science are data analysis and analytics. Well, you have here data mining, big data analytics, machine learning. You have methods and algorithms, which include software tools, and you get here, there's a cycle with big data. So, machine learning, it's actually an intersection between data analytics and methods and algorithms, we could say. So, it's a part of data science. What are the stages of knowledge extraction? Well, first, you need to select your data. Then you need to define a pre-processing method to pre-process your data. Most likely, your data will require a transformation, so you need to transform your data somehow. Then you need to go to machine learning, find the patterns, if there are any between your data, do the classification or do the regression tasks, and then you need to evaluate and interpret the results. That's way, that's, this is how you finally go to knowledge. So, why machine learning? Why machine learning? I think, uh, do, you, do you see my slides? No, sir. Okay, I think somehow, somehow I'm losing the sir. So maybe uh, I will stop the video now. Yes. Yes. Now yes. it is okay. doing. I will stop the video to save bandwidth. Uh, so why machine learning? Machine learning uh, is because. The main reason for using machine learning, it, because it's now now rates, data is the new oil. We have massive amounts of data that we need to interpret. We need to define patterns out of it. And now, in now rates, we have the computational power, and there are several state of art advances in machine learning, like deep learning, uh, that will give us the opportunity to 
use all these massive amounts of data. So what's actually machine learning? Uh, actually, Professor Mitchell, Tom Mitchell from MIT uh, was asking about how do we create computer programs that improve with experience? So the basic definition given by Tom Mitchell back in 1997 uh, 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 is that a computer program is said to learn with from experience E with respect to some class of tasks T and performance measure P if its performance tasks in T as measured by P improves with experience. This is the basic definition, but maybe this image will help both better to understand the machine learning approach. In traditional programming, well, you have the data, you have the program, and you get the results. The output is the results. Well, in machine learning, you have the data, you already know the results, and the output is actually the model, it's the program. So that's uh, a basic definition. So what we do with uh, machine learning uh, is to train using to using our data. We train using a, uh, a learning method, and then afterwards we test. We use some test data to uh, to test if our learning method, our model, our learning system model is adequate, uh, is modeled, uh, has modeled the system enough, so uh, adequately. So, according these models, these learners, according to uh, the way they, wo they work, they can be divided and supervised, where you know the output, you know the data and the result, unsupervised. Well, in this case, in cases where you don't know uh, actually the output, but you want, for example, to uh, to put class to do clustering in classes in cases in data. You want to uh, put patterns to find patterns in this uh, you, you, in your data, but you don't know the output. Or semi-supervised, which is actually uh, a case of. Uh, that resembles quite well with the supervised in some cases, but you don't know the whole data here. Or reinforcement learning, which we which can be used, which we learn from experience. For example, in this case, a robot would learn the paths uh, using reinforcement learning. But the main approaches that we will discuss today will be regression, which means actually you have some features and you try to make a model, but the output is a numerical value. Classification, where for example, you have a spam mail or not spam mail. You try, you have some data and you try to put them in different classes, two or more classes. Clustering, where you have some data, but you would like to know how your data fits in different classes. For example, you might have uh, Wi-Fi waveforms, you might have as well as Zigbee waveforms, and you try to, to separate them, to identify them which is which. Or another popular approach would be anomaly detection. For example, you have an event, you have an outlier point, that does not fit your data, and you need to identify that this is an outlier point. This is an event, for example, this is a, a service degradation in a network, or it's a, it's a leak in a pipe. It's a, an outlier, an event that is not normal, an abnormal event that you need to identify. So, how do we train? Well, we we need first to calculate 
to, uh, to train our model using a loss function. And we train our model to uh, fit our data. This is CK is our data. F is our model, our uh, the model we would like to present. A loss function would be, for example, if we have two classes, could be a simple one on zero, some uh, some kind of loss function. If you have the right class, zero otherwise. Sorry, is that? Uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. Can you all hear me? Yes, yes, sir. yes. yes sir. Okay, yes. okay, okay. Or in case of a regression, the loss function could be something like that. Well, you uh, you find the error in your model between the real data, and you multiply it you uh, in the power of two. So you have to train. And then we have to have uh, after we train and we have the, the training error as small as possible, we need then to try the testing error. So the testing error will be with data that your model has never seen before. It will be new data for the model. And that way we will try the performance of the model. So, the training uh, set uses if you if we have this uh, this picture with a simple classifier and a complex classifier, and here's the arrow in c-axis. Uh, what we uh, we try to uh, avoid is two sorts of error. These are bias and variance. Well, the bias error, it's actually coming from your model. It's inherently from your model because of your uh, of the algorithm you selected. It could be something inherently. While the variance in your model, which could be something like that, the red line, this is this is uh, uh, this is cause this is due to your data. Maybe your data has a lot of uh, uh, fluctuations and you have a high variance. So this is this means this line here means that you have a high bias. So your model is too simple. Or after that line, your model is too complex. You have a high uh, variance. So what's the correct model? Somewhere in the middle. So there is a trade-off between bias and variance. Because, as you can say, bias can be reduced with as the model complexity uh, increases, but the variance would also increase, which causes uh, overfitting. So, actually, high bias means a simple model, which means that here you have the problem of underfitting, or a high variance means that your uh, data are trying to fit all the fluctuations of uh, uh, the, your model is trying to fit all the fluctuations of the data so it's overfitting what would be the correct model something like that maybe so you need but there's always a trade off between high bias and uh, high variance for example this is the the best case where you get low variance and low bias, as you can say, most of your uh, predictions are right on target. When you have low bias and high variance, you get something like that. When you have a high bias and low variance, all your predictions are focused, but they are out of your target. And when you have both high variance and high uh, high bias, as you can say, all your predictions fail uh, to uh, fa are away from the, the target. So,
So how do we train the data? How do we separate our data? Well, there's a, a rule that we uh, somehow uh, select about 60% for training, 20% for validation, and 20% for testing. What is what is uh, validation? What is what is each, each of these cases? So training is to have the initial data that you will try to uh, to fit in your model so that the error is as uh, as low as possible the validation data are the data that will be used to fine tune uh, your model to fine tune to find the best hyperparameters that are suitable for your model and finally most importantly the test data will prove the performance will actually show the performance uh, of your model the model performance depends actually on the test data which is the data that you have not seen so they will provide an estimation of the test error Okay, uh, well, and as, as uh, a rule of a thumb, never use the, the test data in, uh, in order to, fi to fine tune the parameters of the model. The, this, the, the test data is simply for uh, provide, and provide the estimation of the test data. They cannot be used in any other, any other kind. Otherwise, you will get, most probably you will get uh, overfitting. So, uh, what's the validation? The validation would be, as I said, uh, most probably it's, it's uh, and one of the most common things is to do a, a K fold cross validation, which means to uh, split your data in several folds several parts which we call folds and find the parameters that are best suited as you can see here from the split from the split here you, you train only with fold one then you train only with fold two then you train only with fold three fold four fold five for example and that way by training using different parts of your of your data, you can fine tune the hyperparameters of your model. So, another um, uh, another uh, process would be to use uh, a, an optimization technique, like the most common one used also in several. Uh, software tools can be found in MATLAB as well as in Python. It's grid search that looks for the best hyperparameter uh, values. That uh, and you select uh, you. We choose the model with the best uh, combination of these uh, parameter hyperparameter values. So uh, that concludes the first part of my presentation. Next one, we will try to get uh, more specifically in uh, a different kind of methods like the assembly learning uh, methods. So it's a different kind of uh, machine learning methods. So what's the idea? The idea of assembled methods is to combine several predictors, several models uh, that uh, in a new model this new model will give a better uh, prediction. Some of the most popular methods are the bugging methods, where you get individual models or learners trained independently, and the boosting methods, where the training process is actually an iterative and sequential process, you try to minimize an error and you try to do it accurately. So, 
if you have, for example, model A, model B, model C, you get input of your training data and you somehow combine all the predictions and they are input to another model. They could be input to another model. This is a two level assemble, which is called generalizer. And you finally get the, uh, the final predictions. And most importantly, in most cases, the final predictions from this model are better. They have a better accuracy than the predictions from its independent model. So, uh, how do you build an assemble? You train different models using the training data. Then you predict uh, the outcome by aggregating somehow the predictions made by, uh, by uh, multiple uh, models. For example, for regression, if you have a regression problem, then you could most probably you could uh, aggregate predictions by aver averaging. This is a simple solution. There are other solutions that are more uh, complex. And you refer to uh, the individual learners as base classifiers or regressors, base learners. Uh, one uh, popular method is the boosting method. Uh, as I said earlier, it's uh, you combine several weak predictors in order to produce a better predictor, a stable predictor. Uh, these predictors need to be uh, stable. By meaning stable, you mean that you don't have a high variance. So you somehow, for example, if it is a classifier, you get the result from its classifier if you get if you have m classifiers and then you assign a weight to each of these classifiers and with an iterative method this is an example this is the least well booting a popular algorithm uh, found in this uh, paper you can uh, you try to in its iteration to reduce, to find the best weights that reduce the total training error. Other popular methods, uh, I'm sure that you you will uh, have heard of them. It's the other boost, adaptive boosting. So it uses decision trees. The, the basic predictors are decision trees. You train different copies of these trees with different weights and you try to reduce uh, the error. Another similar boosting method is gradient tree boosting. But in this case, you will try instead of uh, uh, instead of uh, trying to adjust the, the weights, you try to uh, try to fit the uh, residual errors made by the previous predictors. It's quite similar to, to add a boost. Another, as I said, interesting method is the bagging predictors. So in this case, what you do first is the so-called bootstrap sampling. You have a set containing N samples and you select different samples with replacement from this set and different uh, samples. And for example, you create K bootstrap samples. If your data is that, the bootstrap one could be that, bootstrap two, this one. As you can see, it's, it contains some parts of your data and maybe there would be uh, replacements. And then you train its model, its classifier using the bootstrap sample with a different sample and then you somehow uh, you could average the predictions of k models this is called bagging which is a which is a word coming from bootstrap bootstrap sampling and aggregation this is a new word bagging so uh, in this case you could combine also unstable predictors several unstable predictors to produce a stable uh, predictors. Unstable, as I said, is a predictor that 
small changes in training data produce it's a, a large changes in the model. It means that this is uh, a, pr a predictor with high variance. You have high variance. And uh, you build uh, a model. So the best the idea here is to have uh, to have uncorrelated errors to have uh, the predictors are uncorrelated. So this is why the bugging algorithm uh, works well in, in regression. It could be something like that. You average the results of all regressors or in classification, it could be voting over all the, the outputs, which means that uh, if it's a two class problem, for example, you vote it's class one or class two, you get the outcome and the outcome would be what the majority of the classifiers uh, have selected. A similar example, a quite popular example of bagging is random forest. You have decision trees, you have different decision trees that you get to train using bootstrap sampling, it's bootstrap, and then finally you average the predictions of all trees and you get a final prediction. Uh, uh, another uh, popular method also in uh, scikit-learn uh, library, Python library, is the voting regression. Well, you get, you have several models, for example, and you somehow vote, as I said, you get the majority if you are, it's, it's, if, if, it's, it's, if, if it is a classifier or uh, if it is a, a regressor, you uh, average the, the results. So, Let's see, this is the ensemble methods. Now, let's see some examples of machine learning in wireless communications. So, what kind of data are the wireless networks generating? Well, first, for example, you have several data coming from IoT, from, from Internet of Things, you have several data coming from various sensors, you get then several data coming from different network monitoring facilities and you get you might have data coming from cognitive radio cases while well, you get different kinds of uh, different kinds of uh, waveforms uh, that are software defined using the uh, uh, act as cognitive radio so one of the uh, major approaches, as we said, it's classification. So you get different classes. For example, well, a most common example in uh, uh, wireless communications is to classify between different waveforms of uh, for uh, different modulation uh, waveforms. So in a recent paper, you can see here the reference. It's a 2020 paper. You have a convolution neural network. And you get, you get here, you see here different, uh, you classify different types of uh, modulation. It's a, a, a automatic modulation classification. And here, well, the authors train, use different types of convolution neural networks to see how this improves with uh, 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 the classification, how the classification accuracy improves. Uh, and here's the confusion matrix of, it's a multi-class classification of different kinds of uh, waveforms. So another classification example will be to use uh, a convolution neural network to identify between different types of uh, uh, wireless uh, wireless technology between Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, or Zigbee. You get here the samples, and they use a convol again a convolution neural network is used. You have several. Uh, the authors use several 
uh, other learners and the proposed their uh, results are better when we they have the they their proposed convolution neural network in this case and here you get you see the right relation between training and validation another example is um, in spectrum sharing well in order to uh, be able to um, uh, to have a better uh, access and control of resources you have the idea of uh, spectrum sharing by uh, context awareness this means that you know from somehow you know what kind of traffic there is for example you have wi-fi traffic you have 4g lta traffic or digital tv uh, dvb traffic and you need to make decisions how to uh, best uh, use your spectrum so you could have you could combine this all these kinds of traffic uh, in uh, in a single system so to do the to do that instead of having each chip, one chip, one chip, one a hardware for each kind of graphic, you could do that by using radio virtualization. It means that combined with uh, software-defined radios, uh, combined with software-defined radios, you could have a different slice for each technology. And in this case, what you have, what is presented in this paper is that you have different types of traffic. You have here a machine learning classifier that identifies from the waveforms the, the traffic, and then this is uh, this kind of this is uh, given as output to an SDR platform, where the platform decides depending on the traffic uh, how to use the traffic this kind of how to use uh, the, tra the the spectrum in different user equipment for example you could have slice one you would have short best access in channel one for user equipment one or long frame access in channel two for user equipment two you decide how to uh, have the virtual uh, slice of the radio so this is about classification. Now let's have a look about clustering. Well, as you recall, uh, clustering means that we don't know. It's a, a type of uh, unsupervised learning because we don't know the outcome. We have different classes of different data and you want to classify this, this data into different clusters. So for example, you have here different waveforms. You have uh, Wi-Fi, you have Zigbee in the same frequency channels, and you have noise. And the authors here in this paper try to identify uh, the different clusters and uh, I, I, um, identify the spectrum uh, users. Okay, that's the, uh, the big idea. Another uh, interesting application is anomaly detection. As I said, when you have an outlier or the anomaly in time could be something like this. You have an abnormal uh, behavior, could be something uh, degradation in uh, service. For example, in a recent paper, the authors have noticed that there are several degradations of service in uh, wireless sensor networks and IoT networks. And they have gathered all the data that are about the degradation of uh, service. And they have used an autoencoder to better encode the data. And then they are classifying this. They're trying to uh, detect anomaly uh, or not. They try and they have both the the normal data and the anomaly uh, data, the, the service degradation data, and they try to decide using different machine learning 
techniques, both supervised and unsupervised, to uh, identify the anomaly. Another very popular in wireless communications is uh, regression. As I said, in regression, we have a vector of X that contains all our inputs, and we try to obtain a numerical value, C, that is the outcome of all this, uh, uh, of uh, this model. Some of common performance metrics are the mean square error, where you have here, this is the output of your model in the real data, DM is the real data, the mean absolute error in test, in test data, the root mean square error, it's the same as this, but it's, just, it's the, the square root of the above. And I think the most important is the mean absolute percentage error, which actually denotes the percentage that your model is, uh, performs according to the real data. So, some work we, me and many colleagues have uh, done in this case, for example, we have a regression example that is, uh, we have a series of different features input to a model and the output is the path, is uh, a path loss for mobile communications. In this paper, back in, we compared different techniques, neural networks and random forest. So what you do, you have from one side, a neural network from the other side you have a random forest and you try to uh, uh, make a modeling make uh, make a model out of its uh, kind of uh, learner you have different you have building you have a map with different building heights from five meters 21 meters uh, a base station placed in a certain uh, area all the training data comes from ray tracing model using the EDX single pro program. You have several training set and you have uh, a, a test set, different types of outputs, different numbers of outputs, and the output is the path loss. So what you do here, well, you have the base station somewhere here, and you have somewhere in different in different points, you have the uh, user equipment. So what you do, you have different types of information, such specific information. That means that all the information that is near about the uh, geometry, the heights of the buildings that are near the uh, user equipment, and you get to have the line of sight in uh, information that means the heights of buildings at the distances, different distances between the transmitter and the receiver, different inputs. So if you combine these inputs, you can have uh, you use them as input to a neural network at first, and you get the path loss, or to a random forest and the output is again the path loss. So you get results in different frequencies, for example, 900 megahertz for both the neural network and the random forest. So you can see the random forest uh, is uh, better here. And for another frequency, again, random forest performs better. Another regression uh, example that would be uh, I will go because I think the time has passed I will go some uh, a bit uh, a, a, a bit faster is to have a lot of um, information about a UAV from a UAV flight and based on that information you have you will be able to make a model that predicts the received single strength from several uh, from um, several base stations well these are the relevant papers what you get this is the uav 
you have, I will skip this one and try to get to the results, different software. The measurements look like this. You get measurements in different additives and you get the received power per, per cell. And you have a lot of your, the model consists of several inputs that it's all about the UAV, uh, uh, the UAV uh, height, uh, longitude, uh, latitude, and uh, details, the elevation, the antenna height, and the final you get the received power. Well, there are several approaches to use this, to solve this problem. One is using evolutionary algorithms combined with uh, neural networks. You get here the comparative results simple by using evolutionary algorithms, but combined with uh, neural networks, combined with a uh, 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 Marquette method, you can have even better results. Here you have the simple algorithm training, here you have a hybrid algorithm with Levenbert Marquette, as you can see the results from this one uh, is uh, better. I will skip uh, the model validation. The second approach, which actually produced better results, will be to use a lot of machine learning models like uh, support vector machine, Gaussian processes, neural networks, list queries boosting, bagging, generalized ensemble method, and basic ensemble method. And to combine all these into a new model, for example, you have all these, you have all the training data from here. You get also a evolutionary algorithm like Southwarm algorithm to optimize the weights and then combine all these into a new assembled uh, model. And finally, uh, the assemble method manages to uh, drop the mapper uh, uh, error to below uh, 4% gives the best results. These are the comparative results of uh, the methods. So this is the bagging method. This is the LS boost method. This is increase, histogram, and the LS boost decision tree. Another one, another thing you can do with uh, machine learning is to identify your the importance of its uh, of, of its feature input. For example, as you can see here, you get the importances of its feature input to the to the model. For well, this is for the random forest. This is for the other boost. But what's it's notable? It's that both the the drone altitude and the latitude are the most important parameters here in this case. It's different. It's different for its model, but uh, it gives you the importance of uh, features and some other features. For example, antenna height has no importance in this. You could uh, omit this uh, as an input. Another regression example, but because time has passed, I will skip it, and uh, I will try to go to. Uh, I will try to go to here. So, uh, why is machine learning important for 5G? Okay, well, we know that existing uh, 4G networks uh, use IP uh, connectivity. Sometimes this could offer poor efficiency. Uh, the concept of machine learning and artificial intelligence will allow 5G networks to be more predictive and proactive, so to become more functional. That means that we could have intelligent base stations that make decisions for themselves. The mobile devices will create adaptively clusters that are based on learned data. And uh, overall, we will, this will, will improve the efficiency, the latency, and the reliability of the network. So, uh, there are several potentials of machine learning for 5G. For example, in enhanced mobile broadband, the enhanced mobile broadband 
uh, paradigm will allow new applications with uh, higher data rates. So, for example, this uh, will include ultra high definition video streaming and virtual real reality, uh, machine, massive machine type communications. Uh, we will be uh, 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 efficient transmission of mo small amounts of data over extended areas. This covers IoT, for example, body area network, smart homes, IoT. Uh, all times, all these kinds will cover the machine, uh, the massive machine type communications. And also in this, machine learning would play an important role. And of course, uh, ultra reliable low latency communications. It means that uh, several special cases that require a quite high bandwidth, like connected healthcare, remote surgery, mission critical applications, autonomous drivers, autonomous uh, driving, uh, high speed train connectivity, smart industry applications, all these applications require low latency and mobility over high data rates. All this will become possible with using machine learning as well. So, uh, some software tools about machine learning. Overall, I think you all uh, know about MATLAB and uh, uh, the statistics and machine learning toolbox and uh, the deep learning toolbox in MATLAB. But uh, one of the most common uh, tools that I use also myself, uh, it's Python. It's an object-oriented interpreter uh, language. It has uh, several machine learning libraries, most commonly scikit-learn. You get to have all uh, of these methods from uh, scikit-learn. So it's if you want to start with machine learning, a very good place to start would be Python with uh, scikit-learn. Also from Google, you have TensorFlow using uh, with a Python front end using uh, for using convolution neural networks for deep learning. Uh, Thano was another library that stopped maintenance from model model university, and also Keras is a very popular uh, Python library that can wrap both Thano and TensorFlow and uh, is gaining official Google support, it's quite simple. Another very popular library is uh, the CAFE. You, you can use for convolution networks. Uh, it's good for feed forward transport and image processing. It's, uh, it has also Python and MATLAB interfaces. Uh, it's very, uh, it's easy to code. It's quite flexible. Uh, the interface is uh, command line mainly. So, uh, that briefly, I, sorry for the fast in uh, the final slides, but I wanted to finish. Uh, so I hope I have not tired you with all this uh, information. So I'm uh, open to any questions or your comments for the presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, sir. So it was a very uh, informative session and even uh, all the participants have put it in the chat box. The session was very informative. Uh, they want to have, uh, like, is it possible, Professor, uh, yes. to share your slides? I is it possible to? Uh, share these slides, sir. Well, yes, I could uh, make a PDF of these slides and send you, yes. So, I can send to Professor Paramesahari with uh, email, yes. Yes, yes, yes. thank yes. you. That would yes. be very nice. Yes, So yes, there, sure. are, yes. Uh, there are so many questions are there here. So I will just uh, go through a few questions. Yes, are there any questions? Yes. Yeah. 
will optimization methods such as branch and bound hold for machine learning enabled next generation uh, wireless networks or heuristics will still be required as in the previous generations are are uh, are uh, heuristics still required in wireless networks this is yeah, uh, Yes, well, uh, they are required, yes, but uh, there are now several complex problems that uh, it's very difficult or impossible to solve with uh, previous methods. For example, uh, I don't know if you heard of uh, intelligent reflecting surfaces, which is uh, going to be part of 5G and beyond networks. In this case, it's uh, very difficult to uh, to make a, or even impossible to uh, to make a, a channel estimation. So in this case, machine learning will be used for channel estimation because it's too complex to to do it otherwise. So it's uh, it depends on the case, but uh, there are problems still in wireless communications that previously used methods cannot be used. It's or it's very difficult and complex to be used. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, there is one more question. How yes. to enhance the energy efficiency and spectrum efficiency both using machine learning? Energy, en sorry, energy efficiency and spectrum efficiency in 5G. Energy. Yeah. So, what's the relation with machine learning? Uh, well, regarding, um, actually, I don't think there's, a, if you want to optimize both energy efficiency and spectrum efficiency, uh, it's an optimization problem. It's not, it's not, a, I don't think this is a machine learning problem. Or I was at least what, uh, as far as I've, I have heard. Actually, I think this is uh, usually it's a multi-objective problem with conflicting objectives. I don't know if I have not understood the question. Uh, is it answered? Uh, participants, uh, if any clarification is required still, so you can go ahead. Sorry, sorry, sorry. What is the question again? How? Ma'am, you can only read out uh, because they cannot unmute and uh, speak. The participants uh, cannot speak and uh, uh, unmute and uh, speak to just uh, ask the questions. Okay, sir. Uh, what is what is better? Uh, what is better ML technique for classing wireless users in a MIMO network? Yes. Okay, means well. I don't know. Well, you need to to test it with your data. I don't know. It could. I don't know which is the best uh, technique. This is. Uh, we cannot tell which is the best technique. We need to uh, test with the data. We need to test several methods and to find out which is the best technique. Maybe the best technique will be the ones the one that you will. Uh, that you will create. For example, it could be an assemble that you will create. That could be the best technique. It's, uh, I cannot, it's very difficult to answer that. You cannot answer without yeah. the data. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, professor. Uh, yeah, one more question is there. Hello. Implementation of AI and ML is possible because of SDN and NFB. So can you please brief these techniques? Sorry, implementation of implementation AI, of AI and ML is possible because of SDN and NFB. Well, I'm not sure. I'm I'm try is this is this question in chat? I'm trying to, to find the question, but uh, yeah, it's, it's there in the chat box, sir. Sorry, I, I don't understand the question. I don't understand the question. Sorry, I, I can yeah. implementation. Yeah. 
yes sir what may be the career sir, uh, of uh, uh, and ml yeah pra- yes yes uh, sir uh, the the question is uh, about a possibility to i ml for uh, uh, i mean uh, how uh, how ai ml can uh, uh, be applicable using uh, the um, the techniques yes. yeah, yeah. how ml energy be, uh, right. i think so your point. your sound is breaking okay. yes okay, sir that, i i mean i was trying to interpret someone's thought so my question also is there professor uh, in case yes. of your uh, uav experiment what was the functional split that you have uh, made uh, how the role of a uh, base station and uh, subsystems in the base station inside the the flying element and then the ground control station how did you do yes. the functional split what are the functional parts of the uav you mean in uh, okay yes sure for sure yes just a moment i will i will show it yes thank you well the functionals are uh you have uh, the the uav was a quadcopter iris plus and the ground station was a, a laptop with a mission planner software installed and uh, the measurement device was a simple uh smartphone a samsung galaxy but with keysight's nemo handy software this did all the measurements and when the uav was landed this uh, the measurements were all in uh, the sd card of the uh, of the smartphone and then when the we the uav landed there was a data analysis software again from keysight the nemo analyze pro software to uh, to analyze the data so for post processing of the data so i'm not sure if i have answered your question all right thank you and then the, i'm asking the other party asked you that is uh, sd and nfv how they are related to ai ml and uh, are they very very strongly related that was their question are what what is very strongly related to ai to uh, uh, yes. Yes, we have software defined networking and network function yes. virtualization. The participant yes. wanted to know the strong bondage between them. Yes. I, he wanted you to emphasize that. Yes, yes. Uh, as well as software defined networking and uh, okay. uh, network virtualization could be strongly connected with ML, as in this case, where you have the classifier and you can. Uh, identify the type of waveform, the type of uh, uh, traffic, and that way the output then can be uh, given to a software-defined uh, network that will decide the best uh, spectrum sharing technique. Uh, so yes, it can be connected. Yes, it can be connected. Yes. Yeah. Now, uh, now that uh, you answered his question, let me get back to my question. The question was uh, inside the base station that you used other than the key side test equipment tools inside the base station there is a functional split of g node b control you and the data and then, uh, the caching of data flow between them and uh, the, the those aspects i was interested to know in the uav case in this case in this case you mean in this case this base station or in the uav So, have you have you used the UAV as a use case of a base station, or as a user equipment? Oh, just uh, uh, we didn't have a uh, base station. The base stations were already installed. Base stations that was in the city of Greece. Uh, we used the commercial network. It's measurements from the commercial network. We did not install the base station. Okay, okay. So UAV okay. and in your experiment is the UE user equipment. That is how you. Yes, yes, right. yes, Thank yes. You. Thank you. You can find the de- the details in these papers. In these papers, you can find the details of this experiment. 
I don't know if there are any other questions. Uh, yeah, professor. Uh, professor, can you ask uh, professor Gordos, I would like to uh, interrupt here. Uh, I have a few questions from the students, and uh, since in this large gathering, students ask few questions, uh, basic questions. Can I take, sir, Professor Gordos? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Tell me, please. Yes. Okay. So the one student asked how machine learning can be used in automation of tools. How can it be used for for automation? Automation. It's not how machine learning can be used in automation of tools. What he asked for tools for uh, yes. how can it be used? Well, it can be used uh, using. Uh, the different uh, machine learning libraries from different uh, from different tools, for example, from Python, from uh, MATLAB, using MATLAB. I don't know if this is the question. I have not. I think you, uh, the, the sound is not is breaking. It's not very good. I will try to find the question here. Oh, it's uh, it's very hard. Uh, Jay, I have asked this question. Yes. 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 Uh, the question was like how it can be used in uh, automation of uh, tools. Like I am working on an electronic platform, so there automation. is a lot of data from ele electronic data. So we need to use that data and do the prediction of if it will be work properly or not. As well, uh, I'm not sure about it. You mean for in electronics data automation tools in uh, electronics? Yes, well, yes. I, yes. Well, I, I'm not sure. It's it's not my field. I my field is wireless communication, so I'm not I'm not quite sure about it. Okay. So I'm sorry, but I cannot answer this question. I don't know anything of this. Uh, okay. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Uh, I have, I have a, another question in wireless communication. How to choose? How to choose the bias and the variance values? while writing the MATLAB program for real-time data case in wireless communication? Oh, you don't actually, well, you don't choose the bias and variance. Actually, th this is comes from your model. Your model actually, uh, if you have, uh, if you have a, a model that fits well your data, you will have low bias and low variance, but this is, this is a property of your model. You don't choose them. You don't. You need to make your model as more general as possible, as generic as possible. That's okay. and there's no there's no optimum model. Okay, okay, professor. Another question is how many types of evolutionary algorithm in present and which are the best suited among them? Evolutionary algorithms. Which is the best? Is this yes. The question? Yes. Yes, this is the this well, question. Okay, well, uh, actually, that's that's a very good question because there isn't the best algorithm. Uh, there is uh, the so-called no freelance theorem that states that uh, there isn't a single algorithm that performs better in all problems. Some algorithms would perform better in one problem, but uh, if algorithm A performs very good in problem A in a, in a problem is then uh, better than algorithm B, then in a different problem, algorithm B will perform better in uh, than algorithm A. So there is not a better algorithm. Uh, what is What exists is uh, algorithms that could perform better in specific problems. So that's why we publish a lot of papers with algorithms, because uh, there are uh, cases where an algorithm could fit better, could perform better in a specific problem. Okay. Uh, another question in 5G. In 5G, using the massive MIMO, how to deal with the big data as input? Any suggestion? How we can use big data uh, in 5G? Well, uh, I, I think big data comes from uh, uh, the 5G network from network monitoring that could be big data. Uh, so, uh, Professor, this is my question. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, what I want to ask is because uh, uh, in 5G, the yes. the amount of input data is quite large. 
So uh, yes. when we were dealing with uh, machine learning uh, techniques, so uh, how to uh, deal with such a huge amount of data? Actually, uh, uh, can the machine learning model will uh, work in optimal manner uh, by the, such kind of huge data set? Well, you could, uh, for example, you could use uh, the data set for channel um, for channel prediction for channel modeling using machine learning in the massive MIBO. And I have seen several papers that use deep learning for this, as I recall. Uh, you could use uh, beamforming. You could use it uh, uh, for um, to predict for mobile users to predict the build, the the beamforming again using uh, uh, machine learning techniques in uh, massive MIMO uh, stuff like that. As I recall, I I I, I don't remember now you know, any other application. Automation in uh, ML using ML. Automation in graph theory. Yes. Can you use graph theory in ML? Uh, what? Sorry. Graph theory. Graph theory. Graph theory. Graph theory. Okay. Uh, well, maybe yes, yes, maybe. I, I, I'm I'm not quite sure about it. I'm not quite sure how to combine graph theory. Maybe, but maybe if if you uh, you could train uh, an algorithm to. Uh, to find the best routing pattern, for example, using graph theory. I don't know. Maybe I'm not. Okay. I, I don't know of these kind of problems, to be honest. And mostly, uh -huh. I I work with uh, problems in physical layer, not in uh, network layer. So, uh, thank you, Professor. Another question about efficiency: how, how to enhance the energy efficiency and spectrum efficiency uh, by using yes. uh, machine learning? Uh, I'm not sure using spectral efficiency and damage efficiency to improve using machine learning. Uh, I think this is an optimize in five uh, G. This is an optimization problem, not the machine learning problem. So, what I would use, I would use evolutionary algorithms to solve this kind of problem. Uh, one question asked about the platform, Professor uh, Pi OD or the Pi Torch for anomaly detection. Which platform is better? Any comment? Which anomaly Pi does system? Pi OD and Pi, Pi Torch. Which, uh, which, um, which is better in anomaly detection? Yes, yes. Pi OD oh. or Pi Torch. Well, this in anomaly detection, well, it, de it depends on uh, the problem. It depends on the problem. Okay. It's, it's problem dependent. Professor, there is uh, one more question on uh, uh, what is the uh, effective technique of machine learning for MIMO use cases? Is it agglomerative hierarchical clustering or K means clustering? Clustering, yes. Hierarchical clustering, well, uh, I don't know this. Be honest, I don't know this kind of problem. What's the best machine learning technique? Uh, you need to. Uh, you need to uh, to find it. You need to uh, to predict it. You, it's not. There's not a, a best technique for every for every case. You need to apply the data and to find which is the best technique for its problem. There's not a best technique. Well, actually, there's no freelance theorem. Actually, there's no. Uh, there's a no freelance theorem for machine learning as well. So it's the same thing. I cannot tell which is the best technique for its problem. You need to apply the model and the compare techniques to see which performs best. best. A uh, few questions asked about the language, uh, Professor. For the beginner, uh, which uh, software language, computer language uh, is widely used for starting to work on machine learning? Uh, well, I would suggest uh, Python. I would suggest Python because there are several 
uh, libraries in Python, and moreover, uh, Python is free, while MATLAB is not free. So, I would suggest Python. So, another question about spectrum sharing: How machine learning is useful in solving the problems of spectrum scarcity? How does it improve the performance when used in spectrum sharing techniques? Well, in spectrum sharing techniques, yes. Well, the the basic idea is to uh, to be able to identify, to do a clustering technique, to identify uh, what's in the spectrum, so that you will be able to find out uh, what types of uh, of uh, technologies are um, are uh, 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 exist and uh, find out the holes in this. Uh, in the spectrum, so to be able to to use the spectrum uh, uh, more efficiently. Therefore, uh, machine learning in this case is used for spectrum identification, for spectrum awareness. I would say. Okay, uh, about uh, particularly in cognitive radio networks, how can choose the data and results for machine learning algorithms? Well, that's a complicated case. You need to set up. Uh, a test bed to to find out to, to to create your own data. I don't I don't know if there are, as far as I know, there are not open data sets. Actually, uh, this uh, this is uh, something that I have I have not mentioned, and it's interesting to say that the most difficult part in machine learning is not to find the code for your model. You can easily find. Uh, several open source codes in the uh, in internet, but the most difficult part is to f to get the data. In most cases, there are not. Uh, you have to create your own data. That means that you you will have to uh, make a test bed to create your own data. That's the most difficult part. The most difficult part in machine learning. Obtaining the data. Okay. Uh, one participant wants to know about the data sources for 5G wireless networks. Yes. Yes. Uh, what is the question about the 5G? Uh, this is about the data sources for the 5G wireless networks. Sorry, the, the data? Uh, data source. Data source. Data oh. data services da data services. No 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 data sources. Uh, am I clear? Uh, Vishwajit Agrawal, if he is present here. This, which uh, which uh, which slide are you referring to? This one. You mentioned about the big data in machine learning. So I wanted to know uh, big data means very big data. So what are the sources of Big data for five G. Yes, yes, big data. Yes, yes, big data. Yes, yes. Uh, well, as I said, well, the wireless networks and the most probably five uh, G are creators of big data. So you get a lot of data uh, from these uh, networks. Yes, and you will get more in the future. So you need uh, machine learning techniques. To be able to uh, distinguish this kind of data, to find patterns, to be able to predict channels. I don't know if I have uh, answered your question. Maybe I will take your permission to suggest him. See, when we apply uh, 5G and IoT on uh, use cases like industry automation or uh, robotics and the things, then it will generate a lot of data that can be called as a big data, and then you can analyze using these techniques. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, sir. Sure. Yes, for sure. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. I have one question. Can I ask here? Thank you, sir. Yes. Can I ask one question? Yes, yes, please. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Welcome, Dr. Sartios. Good afternoon from India. Uh, it's a nice presentation. I, I went through all this. Actually, we work on machine MIMO. And we want to use this uh, deeper learning techniques. Uh, can you can you suggest some uh, some uh, way where where we can we can solve the problems of the kind of the antenna selection or beam forming and kind of the 
link well, uh, in the Maimo domain? Yes. Uh, well, if you look in the literature, I think you, if you search with Massive Maimo and uh, Deep yeah. Learning, I think you will find several papers. There are yeah, several we have seen some yes. papers and something yes. also we are working in that way. Just uh, we want to, um, to listen from you if any things, uh, any best uh, models or some kind of uh, an algorithm you can propose or something. And we can see if we can uh, have some well, common in the future. Yeah. Yes, well, I think in uh, uh, I think now the most hot area is uh, IRS, uh, intelligent re reflecting services, not actually. Exactly, yeah. That is one of the interesting yeah, Yes, yeah. not mm -hmm. actually Massive MIMO, because uh, there are several papers in Massive MIMO, but uh, there are, <laughs> I, I have seen some latest papers that uh, okay. try to do channel prediction with uh, IRS with deep learning. So. Okay, mm -hmm. it's it's a hot mm -hmm. topic, I think. Yeah, yeah. So I I I'll, I'll take a chance to write you. Okay. Thank, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for your help. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, thank you question. very much. I have one more question. Sorry. I have one more question uh, regarding. Yes. Okay. Yes. How we can use uh, uh, quantum computing in MI? Machine learning, ML. How can we use what? Cloud computing? Quantum computing. No. Cloud, cloud computing Qu in machine learning. Quantum, quantum. Quantum computing. Quantum computing. Okay, <laughs> sorry, I don't know anything about quantum computing. Sorry, it's it's uh, quite out of my topic of research. So, uh, if there are any other questions, uh, one more think... question uh, I would like to take a uh, uh, interesting question. Uh, yes. How we can uh, sorry. How we sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, how we can use Neve based classifier for mobility management in wireless network? For mobility management, well. Uh... I don't know about. Uh, there are several papers uh, in this case. Uh, she I think she that, mentioned about a particular classifier. If you aware about the particular name. classifier, yes, yes. Well, yes. I I don't know. It, well, you could apply it and see if it performs better. But uh, why uh, uh, select a, a specific classifier? You could try several different classifiers and see. Uh, which one is better? Which one uh, performs best? That's. I don't know if this one is best for 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 this case. You need to find out. Thank you, Professor. If anybody have any questions, uh, host, you can ask. This is all what I. Sir, I would like to know whether. Uh, the end-to-end -end wireless channel modeling can be done using the technique you have described because without doing an end-to-end -end, uh, modeling, it is very difficult to get the data set for individual components in the end-to-end -end wireless channel. It's which technique? Which, which technique you are referring to? I'm referring to applying ML and AI as you have described. Yes, but yeah. most of this was concerning IoT, etc. But you did mention 5G networks with uh, the ultra low level. Uh, yes, and, yes, and EMBPS. So therefore, yeah. I see that you have an interest in that area. That's why I'm asking that if the basis is after all the wireless channel, and its uh, modeling requires using. At least they we attended one WebEx uh, presentation in which they said that if you use end to end channel modeling, then the individual component using neural networks, then the individual components can be optimized in an arbitrary manner. So is the neural network a mirror or the use of MI, ML and AI as you are suggesting? Yes, well, you could use a neural network or any other technique, any other ML technique. 
neural network is also machine learning. So it's it's a machine learning technique. Yes, you could use uh, any kind of uh, uh, machine learning technique. Any kind of machine learning. Uh, is there any reference which you could suggest, sir? Well, you, there are several techniques like random forest, uh, uh, support vector regression, uh, support vector machines, uh, ADA boost. As some of the, the techniques I have, uh, um, I have mentioned in the presentation. Yeah, I mean, I was referring to neural networks applied to a channel modeling. Because yes. You mentioned, you yes, just mentioned you, such Gaussian ensembles, and eventually it comes down to other GOE or GO. Yes, they, they, could, they could apply to this problem. Yes, yes, for sure, yes. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yes, Amber. If there is no questions, you may conclude. Sujata, madam, please conclude it. Yeah, Sujata, madam, is going to conclude. Uh, she's here. Thanks a lot for a wonderful session, sir. Very detailed yeah. and informative. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Yes. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Professor uh, uh It was uh, indeed very informative session, and we had so many participations and uh, all uh, appreciated that the session was very uh, informative and uh, they wanted uh, to share your PPTs also. So you said like which you will be sharing with Parvesh Achari sir. So it was very informative uh, with respect to machine learning applied for the wireless communication. So uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank, you thank you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure for me to uh, and thank you again for your invitation. It's a, it's a great pleasure and a honor for, for me. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care. We will, I will be in touch with you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All the participants are requested to fill the feedback. Link to get the e-certificate. So, uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, thank bye you. professor. Bye-bye. 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 Okay, bye-bye. Okay, okay, okay. 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 Thank you, professor. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, professor. Thank you, everyone.